entrepreneurship is full of mistakes and challenges and breakdowns and failures. So if you're trying to avoid them, stop. It's never going to get you where you want to go. You got to learn how to flip those failures into positive learnings that can help you soar in business. Hi, I'm Melanie Benson Strick, and I'm known as America's leading small business optimizer. And in this weekly podcast, I'm going to bring you tips, insights, and strategies that will help you optimize your business so it performs better. You know, ultimately, we want you to make more money and we want you to get more successful. So it's either going to be me or a special guest who's got some great insight to help boost your results. And today, I want to talk about flipping what we might call failures and breakdowns and challenges into the knowledge you need to be able to make really, really powerful decisions and get better results in your business. Now, I'm just coming off a big launch, and with all launches, if you ever ask anybody out there who does launches where they bring their program out to their community in a bigger way, there's going to be things that fail. Things you thought would work won't. Technology you thought was going to be easy isn't. Uh, team members who you thought had it all handled won't. It's just the nature of the business. And, you know, i got to tell you, it took me a couple of days to get my head right with it because typically, you know, I like things to go really smooth and easy. I'm one of those people that doesn't do well with messes. And I don't like when things break down because, heck, I'm disappointing somebody. And I take it really personally. It's really important for me to take care of the people who are part of our launches and to take care of our clients. So if something's not going right, I'm going to do whatever I can to make it work better. But here's one of the things that I always come back to if I'm in a funk or I'm feeling bad or I'm realizing, wow, a lot of stuff didn't work right. And I may be even doubting whether or not I want to move forward on something. And that is Everybody experiences the same thing. None of us are isolated from it. And it helps me when I'm coaching clients who are trying to take big leaps to help them remember that this is a part of growing. It's part of expanding out of our comfort zones. Part of learning new things is we're going to make mistakes and things won't always work the way we want them to. So how do you flip things around and you know move through a period where things maybe aren't working so well so that you can turn them into great successes for you, the people you serve, and the community that you're in. Well, first of all, I truly believe we have to start with our mindset. And the mindset is it has to be embraced that A, we're not alone, but B, you have to get really clear, what are you making that situation mean? So I do a lot of work with mindset, if you don't know that yet. Uh, you'll learn that soon as you continue to watch my videos and tune into these podcasts, and I'm really clear that everything that happens on the outside starts with what we have going on in the brain and in our mind and the thoughts we think and the patterns and how we uh, use our limiting beliefs and we either override them or uh, let them rule us. And so one of the things we have to tackle first is we have to be really conscious about what we're telling ourselves about this mistake or the failure. And it's really easy to slide into, ah, oh, you know, I'm a mess. This isn't going to work. I'm not cut out for this. This this isn't working right. There must be something wrong with me. I'm a loser or, you know, I am whatever, you know, fill in the blank of I am. And by the way, if you are thinking to yourself, oh, I don't do that. I want you to really pay attention to your thoughts next time a mistake happens. What do you do in your mind when that problem occurs? You know, none of us are immune to it, but catching it quickly and basically retraining your mind to think better thoughts about the situation are key. So if you're prone to the, ah, oh, I screwed up, I'm a failure, nobody's going to like me, I've let everybody down, and it brings your energy down, just know you're constricting the flow of positive energy already. And so I just catch yourself and say, all right, what do I need to do now? Uh, or how could, I, how could I make this mean something better? Okay, so again, defaulting back to, okay, well, I know I'm not the only one this happens to, but now what we do with this thought pattern and how constructive we get from this moment on will define your ability to raise your vibration and to achieve higher levels of success. Because here's the thing, deep, deep down inside, your subconscious mind does not want to fail. It does not want to get hurt. It does not want to let anybody down. You know, most of us, we, we truly, truly want to be good and do good and, and have good experiences. And so when we are creating something that could be different from that, there's a part of us that's re going to resist 
stretching and growing and getting out there in a bigger way if the subconscious mind thinks, oh my God, something bad could happen. So you really have to train your mind to think better thoughts. You have to change the meaning you give failures and breakdowns and issues. And here's the way I do this. You know, So I do a couple things. First of all, after embracing this idea that, okay, this happens to everybody when you're risking and challenging and, and pushing against your, your comfort zone, things are going to not go the way you anticipate. But now, how do we make it constructive? First and foremost, you've got to gather the learnings. And um, back in the day, when I worked for a Fortune 500 company, I, I worked on many project teams, either leading them or participating in really big initiatives to help transform the way we got results for our clients. I was involved in what we call uh, total customer satisfaction teams. And uh, often we would do what's called a debrief and we would pull everybody in that was a part of the experience, even customers and suppliers. And we would find out what didn't go right, what did go right, and how can we learn from the pieces that didn't go the way we wanted. And then we would take that knowledge in and we would really look at which of those pieces, if we were to really get present to the parts that didn't go right and what we just learned, how could we do better? Which brings us to the second piece of the flipping the failure process, and that is what can I do better next time? So we might look at what's the system or what's a process or what enhancement do I need to make? What team member was I missing? Where did I have the wrong thought process going into this and I need to do it better? What strategy failed and where? what can I take in about that strategy and learn? So maybe you missed the mark understanding your client's uh, needs and what you launched wasn't fitting their needs or you didn't use the right language or you used the wrong technique or strategy to get in front of them. You have to take all that in and instead of beating yourself up, you embrace it and say, what will I do better next time? Now, if you've got a really long list, there's one thing you got to keep in mind, and that is you can't fix everything at once. So you might prioritize and say, okay, these things are must fix. You know, I've got to get these done. These things are nice to have, and we can deprioritize them and do them later, or we can enhance these over time. And being able to prioritize will keep you from getting overwhelmed with the information that you take in. So step one, debrief. What did we learn from this? Step two, what do we need to fix? How can we put something in place to prevent it from happening again? Really, that's what we're trying to do is when we learn, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, right? So you got to learn from what doesn't work and then make better decisions going forward. For some of us, that means you've got to hire better people or you need more advanced technology or you just simply need to take some time to really master the step you're doing and there's no better way than to get out there and, you know, just go balls to the wall, so to speak, and try it and, and get out there. You cannot change the results you're getting if you don't try new things. So you just have to embrace some of that uncertainty and some of the risk of trying new stuff. There's no guarantees. Now, what's the third step? Well, the third step is to recognize where you need help. And uh, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine earlier, uh, Marnie Batista, and we were doing a, 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 one of the uh, editions of this podcast, and she was talking about, you know, one of the ways that she minimized her risk as she got started was she hired a coach right out of the gate and did exactly what they told him to do. What many of us do is we go into this guess process and we try to figure things out on our own. Well, if you're willing to really up-level the risk, go for it. But if you want to be able to guarantee better results, you're probably going to need some help. You need someone who is ha either had the experience or can help you make better decisions or can help you uh, streamline your process and look for the learnings and the better solutions now that you have the information about what didn't work. So don't be afraid to reach out and get help. As I mentioned before, when I worked for a corporation, we would tap into our clients and ask them for input and ask them to help us implement these solutions in our ongoing relationship. 
We would work with our suppliers and come up with new solutions. We'd bring in our team and ask them how could we each perform our roles better? What was missing? What systems did we need to have that we didn't? Uh, when you're an entrepreneur, you may not have that luxury. You may not have the budget to do all of those pieces. So you have to ask yourself, is there a coach or a mentor or an expert who can take off a piece of this uh, puzzle that's confusing to me or I'm not doing well and do it better for me? So I guess really the key that I want to share with you, having just gone through a, a phase where I just was really confronted by a lot of stuff, is that first of all, just know everybody faces this. But it's what you do in the middle of the failure that defines who you will be the next time. And if you take it personally and you let it get you down and you let it take you out of the game, you've lost. But if you really buck up take the knowledge in, be willing to grow and adapt, be willing to do it better. You know, optimizing is all about taking information in, figuring out what's working, figuring out what's not working, and then creating a better strategy to get better results. And when you learn to do that and you really master the optimizing process, you have the keys to creating a much greater level of success without all the stress. But remember, it all boils down to what you tell yourself. Make up a better story about failure. It's just information, doesn't define who you are, it's how you handle it that defines your reality and your results. So I hope this was helpful for you and I'd love to hear your thoughts and your comments. How do you handle failure? What do you do when things don't go the way you want so that you can rise above the challenge and the breakdown and create better results in the future? I'd love to hear your thoughts on the blog at melaniebensonstrick.com and if for some reason this episode isn't right at the top of the blog, just type in flip failures in the, in the search button and you'll find this episode. And you can just go into the comments and tell me what you think. I'll be back again next week with another guest interview. So be sure to tune in and get ready to take some great notes because it's a good one. All right, we'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.